Welcome to 100 Proof Radio with Jay Wesley. Your weekly journey into examining your spirit choices and social etiquette in different settings. Do you know the written and unspoken rules about ordering and consuming alcohol during a night out on the town with your friends? At office holiday parties? Or when hosting at home? Well, pour your favorite drink and get ready for an unfiltered, enlightening, and comfortable ride. Sip back and relax. And welcome to 100 Proof Radio with Jay Wesley. What's up, everybody? This is yours truly, Jay Wesley, and we want to welcome you to our 42nd episode, Cocktails and Ladies. Do women position themselves near the bar for free drinks? Hashtag buy your own. It is the eve of 4th of July, so we want to wish everyone a 4th of July. And make sure you do not drink and drive. Make sure you drive safely. Make sure you drink responsibly. And if you live in Georgia, remember that there is a new law in effect that if you are seen texting and driving, you will now receive a ticket. So be sure to do that safely. But right now, for many years, women have been almost embarrassed to sit at bars alone or even in groups. However, in recent years, many women have been breaking old stereotypes and ideas such as if a woman was caught anywhere near a bar, she must be friendless or hoping to meet a guy or get free drinks. Women all over the country have confidently found their place at the bar and are very happy in doing so. So I'm going to pause there, take a moment to introduce our guest tonight. And we're going to start with on the phone line with Lisa. How are you, Lisa? I'm great. How are you tonight? Excellent. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule as a national brand ambassador. I'm sure that keeps you busy. So tell us a little bit more about that in yourself. Absolutely. So I'm the national brand ambassador for Selmaris, which is a new liqueur that's recently hit the market. Uh, it's a cream liqueur with a couple of flavors, one of which is mango and then the other is chai. So similarly to Bailey's, when you add it to tea, it makes a chai latte. So we're kind of the first liqueur to pair with tea versus coffee. Interesting. Um, right now I have I'm responsible for 18 states, so I'm on the road a lot. Don't get to spend a lot of time at home in Chicago. I'm on the road right now calling in from a hotel, as a matter of fact. And what city and state is that? I'm in Orlando, Florida right now. All right. Excellent. So, again, thank you. And what's your perspective on this topic right now? Just off the bat, do you think women position themselves near the bar for free drinks? You know, I've been sitting at the bar by myself many years. It's my most comfortable place in a restaurant to be. Um, I just like the interaction that I have with the bartender one-on-one or guests around me that aren't dining with anyone else. So it's never really, you know, been my perspective to post up at a bar and expect anyone to buy a drink for me. I would never go out anywhere without money expecting that to happen um so i i think it's very interesting that this is some new phenomenon of women just deciding to kind of post up to get a free drink well lisa i, I challenge you already because i don't think it's new i think that's been going on for a long time but we shall find out but we're going to bring it to brandy from new york living in <laughs> atl bartender how are you, Brandy? I'm okay. How are you? All right. That's the sexy voice you give me. That is. That's, that's <laughs> what, do you like it? Is that what we're doing right that's now? That's what we're doing today on this Tuesday. You know? All right. I love it. <laughs> Don't start that now. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Brandy. Um, well, I'm 25. I just turned 25 in March. I am originally from New York. I moved to Atlanta last March because I have a podcast and I love radio and entertainment. So I was like, I think Atlanta might be good. That makes sense now. You know, to, to do this. You know, so I just kind of upped and just went on faith. So where do you bartend? Um, I do different places. I, mainly I'm at Old Lady Gang over on Peter Street. I do different like private events, but that's solely where I am right now. 
All right, excellent. And before we go to break, we're going to come back and introduce our guest after break is what I meant to say. We're going to get ready to go to break and have our one minute sip. So for those of you that are watching, go get your drink so that you can sip with us. These are our 4th of July drinks. As you see here, it's a whole tequila shot that you're going to be learning about what's in here. I'm pouring it out into my drink. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Is that what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> yes, it is. All right. So we have here our liquor sponsor tonight, Charm Drinks. How are you? Hi. I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm um, excellent. I'm going to be real good as I keep <laughs> sipping this. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about this drink. Okay. Well, that drink is basically a twist on a um, Bahama Mama. I can't tell you exactly everything that's in that drink because we do have a few twists and turns, but we do have a shot of tequila. Um, in there and also um, the sweet and sour candies that's also in that drink excellent and so how long have you been doing this well as a hobby for the past 10 years started out as non-alcoholic then as I got older I started wanting to have a little fun with alcohol and so past two years just trying to get something started all right and where can people find you on social media? Okay, well, on social media, you can find me at um, Sam Brown on Facebook.com and at Charmed underscore drinks on Instagram. And so do you consider yourself a bartender? You know what? Um, no, I don't. I don't consider myself a, a bartender. I'm not a mixologist. It's just something that I like to have fun with, and it's, it's catered. My drinks are catered for people who really don't like the bars, don't want to go into the restaurants for a drink, and would not like to go to the, you know, um, package store and buy a bottle. They just want to be able to purchase something for cheap. I bring it to you. And so what do you think about this conversation tonight? Well, my opinion is it depends on age. I do work in a restaurant, and we do have a bar in there, and I see um, the younger women. Some of them position themselves, um, of course, to flirt with the bartender, but also to try to get the free drinks also. And I see the older women who really just want to come in there and don't want to be bothered. And so that's a very great point that you made. So there it is. We got one that says it happens that women actually do this. And you brought up another good angle, which is, if, if it's a female and it's a male bartender, so to Lisa's point, Lisa may not necessarily do that or a female may not necessarily go to the bar if it's another female bartender. But what if that bartender is a male, yes. which brings us to our male bartender. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you? I'm um, excellent. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Darren Lamar? Yes, my name is Darren Lamar. I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia. I moved. Atlanta when I was 21 years old. I'm not going to tell you how old I am today. Um, <laughs> but I've been here for a few years. Um, and like uh, Miss B. Haley, I primarily bartend at Old Lady Gang on Peter Street. Um, definitely come and check us out there, 177 Peter Street in Atlanta. Um, and then I do a couple moonlighting places like uh, Halo Lounge, and I've also been at Cafe Circa on Edgewood. Okay, excellent. So do you think that women position themselves at the bar for free drinks short answer absolutely <laughs> and what's well you want to say the long answer for later I, I will save the long answer for later i feel like it um there are different variables uh but the short answer is yes um i think it does depend on the woman their age i think it also like she said depends on the sex of the bartender mm -hmm. um and i think the bartenders know that as well lisa there's two <laughs> against one <laughs> so let's go back to the to the phone line and we are in the midst of our shake it up segment and this is where we really get into the nitty-gritty of the conversation but after one more introduction ashley you are speaking from a consumer on this standpoint so tell us a little bit about yourself as a, a leading author out there and what's your stance on this conversation okay hi my name is ashley little um i live in nashville tennessee and i'm a best-selling author for the book dear fear 2 18 powerful lessons of living your best life outside of fear and my response to this question would be no because I mean, I, did, I go to the bar a lot, and sometimes we're just there to just really chill out. 
I mean, sometimes guys do come up to offer or buy a drink, but for the most part, I can buy my own drink. You know, so I don't. I don't really think women just sit there and wait on guys to come up and buy drinks. I don't agree with that. All right, so there it is. It's two against two. I'm staying out of it. I don't think. What, 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 what Do you were want you me still? to break the tie? I don't know. I don't you know. Would you like me to break the tie? Yeah, so, so where are you at? So we didn't ask you. Okay, so I know we were missing I'm going to be completely honest because I think sometimes we get caught up in the ideal answer of things. And I feel like let's keep it 100, you know? That's why you're on 100 proof. Realistically, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to say at least 75% of women that sit at the bar are willing to do certain things to position themselves to get free drinks. I personally feel like, you know, like you, like they said, sometimes you just go to the bar and you're just vibing, you're just chilling, you know, you're not really looking for anything. But there are those, you know, handful of times that you are. Like, for example, I was, at, I was back home in New York last week and I was at a little, you know, pub and me and my girls were chilling and I had brought the first two rounds. And I'm a Pisces and I'm super intuitive. And so literally I walked to the bar and I had a $50 bill in my hand and I just knew that this man was going to buy these drinks. And I walked up and I stood like, you know, calmly back behind him. So I was like, I'm just... I mean, as per usual, <laughs> I was. That's the judge. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to say, he was like, oh, whenever you're ready. I'm like, I'll wait for you, love. You're good. And so I ordered my drinks. He started talking to me, and he was just like, I love your voice. I'm like, thanks. He's like, what are you getting? I'm like, order a round of shots for my girls. He was like, whatever she gets, put her on my tab. I knew that he was going to buy those right. drinks. That $50 in my hand was just a prop. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I was not spending that $50. That the gag was, that 50 right. was for a bill. I just had it out because right. I wanted it to look good, okay? And that's just what it is. So I right. feel like not all the time, but it happens, and I don't think that it's a bad thing. You know? Right, so let's pause right there. Lisa, let's go back to you. What are your thoughts now that you see that it actually happens? And again, we're not saying that all women do it, but as we just pointed out, a great majority of women do. What are your thoughts on, on hearing this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't been behind the stick as a bartender in a long time, so I probably haven't had that type of perspective to this. But, you know, I have a girlfriend who works at a pretty prominent bar in Chicago. And as a manager, she's had to 86 guests before for just automatically asking to put girls drinks on his tab. And the girls being like, no, we want to pay for our own drinks. So I guess, you know, there's just a couple of other instances that I know of that I'm just like, I don't know, still shocked by it, I suppose. Right. So, Darren, is it a matter of women feeling that they cannot accept a drink because you're going to maximize my time. So let me rephrase that question for you. If a woman accepts a drink from a man, is she obligated to give him a few minutes? Not all of her time, but is she obligated to, to give him a few minutes? Talk to him. I don't believe anybody's obligated to do anything. Um, if some, you shouldn't have took my drink then. You shouldn't have offered the drink. <laughs> you shouldn't have offered I didn't, I didn't, okay. I didn't, I didn't ask for the drink. should have kept your coin. Because when I came, because women, I mean, because I don't want it to be a woman versus man conversation. Because that's not really what it is. But sometimes I know that if a woman comes to a bar, she doesn't know what the outcome is going to be. So I'm sure she has her own money to pay for the bill. But if a man comes up to you or... The woman comes up to you and wants to buy you a drink or pay for whatever you've had or buy you another round. Who am I to say no? <laughs> right. So let me. Just to give the gifts Ashley, really, this you know? is for you. Yeah. If I see you in the bar, I find you to be extremely gorgeous, attractive, beautiful, all the above, intelligent, fine, and sexy. Can I talk to you? without buying you a drink would you give me time and you find me mutually attractive because i am 6'6 six, six, i am 240 oh, i do got a body <laughs> underneath these you clothes sell yourself. i do have an mba in marketing i have a master's in human resources will you talk to me and if so how long do you talk to me do it ever pop in your mind are you going to even offer a drink sir so do you how, would you talk to a man that doesn't even offer you a drink? Yes. That's the question. I mean, I would because I, I'm a communicator, so I like to get to know people and, and just have conversations. I, I don't need him to buy me a drink. I buy my own drink. So I, I would talk to him to have – I don't need him to buy my drink for me to have a conversation. 
you know? I don't think so, everybody yeah, feel that I way. Feel. So, Brandy, what's your thoughts on, on <laughs> I that? I said what I said. Can, what can, I can said. a fine man like me walk up to you and talk to you and I'm taking all your time? You looking like, okay, you've been talking two minutes. You've been talking five minutes. And I've been polite. And he still haven't offered. Does he get play in your book? Um, you know what? I'm su- Like I said, I'm super big on energy. So if I feel like... You know, we're vibing. I will kick it with you. You know, we'll I've been chill. wasting my it, money, it, y'all. It wasn't, <laughs> you know what? It, I've it, been wasting and that's money. that's what it is. If I feel like I'm vibing with you, I will. we can talk. But, I mean, it doesn't save you if you buy me a drink because you can still get egged after that, you know? And that's just what it is. It goes for, like, right. us being bartenders. Just because you're tipping me a lot doesn't mean I have to sit there and kiki with you the whole night. I didn't clock in just to serve you. You gave this tip, and that's what it is. Interesting. So, Darren, what's your thoughts on... On that piece, do a, I, a person I, get time for free? I, I agree with Brandy. Um, because just because you offer something to me doesn't mean, again, like I said, you're not, I'm not obligated to give you my time. You offered me this drink, I didn't ask for it. But then on the other end, there are women who, what the conversation is about, they come to the bar to meet men and hope that they pay for it. So in that instance, then of course, you need to give me your time. You need to talk to me. <laughs> and also, like Brandy said, just because you're there, I as a bartender don't have to give you my time and talk to you and serve you consistently when I have a bar full of people. Mm-hmm. But as a bartender, I think, like me and Brandy have worked together. And a couple times, there have been times when if there are men that come to the bar, two or three men that come to the bar together, I will usually let Brandy handle them, <laughs> not myself. Right. Because... They want her. <laughs> they right. want to talk to her. They, right. want, they want to be entertained by her in her black negligees that she likes to wear <laughs> into uh, into our quote unquote office. But don't be putting but, all my business know, I, out I, there, punkin. I didn't want to put it out there. You but told I told mean, them where we work. They're wear, gonna you, come you, up. You like... wear what you wear. You know. And then, as like yourself, you're six six. I'm six four. You know, two hundred and fifteen pounds. He said there's competition, punkin. <laughs> you know. He said what um, he said. So you know, it's a it's a varying range of people that I will talk to at the bar, but. I feel like people know what they're there for, and depending on what they're there for, they give those people the time of day. So, Ashley, coming back to you, if a man buys your friend a drink, Mm -hmm. does he feel, does he need to buy you a drink too? It's just the two of y'all together. Mm -hmm. And he wants your friend. He's, he don't, I mean, he don't want you, he wants your friend. Mm -hmm. Is it the proper thing for him to offer you a drink as well? What does that say about him or mean if he does does or does not? I mean, if he's interested in her and he's trying to get her attention, I mean, he can buy her the drink. I mean, he's trying to have a conversation with her. He's not trying to talk to me. So I'm not going to get mad about that. I mean, because he's trying to get her attention and start a conversation with her. So he doesn't lose any points because he doesn't offer or buy you a drink? No points lost. No, he doesn't. Does he no, gain he points if he offer and buy you a drink? He's, he's trying to get to know her, so I'm going to like move away kind of and let them have that you know, moment or whatever it's going to be, whether it's a win or whether it's an L or a win. But <laughs> I'm going to let them have that moment. So, Ashley, you have yeah. an interesting perspective. I'm curious to see how does your friends feel about this conversation from what you may know and have experienced going out with them? Does your friends feel the same way that you feel? Yeah. Or when they watch this, they're going to be like, girl, you you know that ain't 100. (laughs) My friends are going to go ahead and let him buy me the drink and have the conversation. They're going to step away because, I mean, it has nothing to do with them if he's trying to talk to me, you know? Right. But no, what I'm saying to you is would your friends say, you know, hell yeah, he need to buy me a drink if he want my time and want my attention and want my phone number. I'm not getting, I'm not, as they say in Chicago, man, man, I'm, I can't the N word, but <laughs> man, man can get my number unless he give me a drink. So does your friends feel that way even? It depends on the friend. It depends on the friend that so I have. So you do have time. some friends that, yeah, that can relate to this topic. Right. It depends on the friend. <laughs> all right. So for you out there that's watching, we have our Causing a Thirst segment coming up in seven minutes. That's where you get to chime in. So be sure to go to Rolling Out 
Facebook page and type your questions and comments there because we want to hear from you. We want to know what your stories are. So don't shy away from this conversation and we're gonna be coming to you shortly. So we're gonna come back to our drink sponsor and we just wanna hear what, you've, what you have to say about what you've heard so far. Well, um, so far what I've heard partially is true as far as it being a male bartender, women do prefer um, men. And then also um, the closing statement that the lady gave um, that you um, asked a question about over the phone about buying the drinks. Um, I've been told, well, my husband let me know about his clubbing days and how he would do it to get women. He would also buy the friends a drink which made an impression and he was able to pull who he wanted to pull. Interesting. So there it is. I mean, it, it happens. It's a real conversation. And that's what 100 Proof is all about, is to confirm and dispel myths in the beverage industry. And so this is one of those myths that exist that's out there. So I don't make this up in the, in the in, you know, pull it out my behind. It happens. It exists. I've been bartending for 15 years. I've owned my own bar, uh, former owner of Boogaloo Lounge. So I have seen a lot of these questions that we have as our show topics come up on a regular so we are going to come back to brandy what do you what, does a drink get a person does that mean they can they get sex afterwards um hmm. i'm not gonna say i mean I can't speak for everybody, but this is I mean, the he, coin. He bought there's three a, rounds for you and your girl. You said one, those honey. drinks were 50. He it's brought three no. rounds. That's it's 150. A, so do, if you, but he's sexy. And he you fun, think that I'm about fun. to sell a tail for 150? You tried it fun. just now. No, no, no. no it's not <laughs> no, happening. No, no. This is a thing, you know. <laughs> but does it happen? So answer this. Does it happen? It, people buy other people a drink, and it leads them at home in bed. It does, and I think that. My point. That's the misconception <laughs> when it comes to some men, and I feel like ultimately it's not just about women positioning themselves to get whatever or should what they sh they should do after they get the free cocktail, because what do you think that you're gaining from giving this free cocktail? If you realistically think that this drink for $11.50 is going to get you some <laughs> tail tonight, you tried yourself. And like you know, the sponsor said over here, she's. She, I I agree in a sense that because. If a guy is buying me a drink and he's trying to talk to me and my friend is sitting there, you better buy my friend a drink because if anything, she's going to oh, be... Oh, so you don't feel like Ashley. She is going to be on your team even more. Not right. to get no tail that right, night. Right, that, right, that's right, right, right. No, I, I get what you're saying. But, but you, you might get a follow-up. But you feel that she should. <laughs> the fruit, you better get buy, her a cocktail because yeah. if right. you don't want to be on this block list after tonight. Because <laughs> she's going to be the one like, oh my gosh, she was so nice. He was so sweet. Right. She's going to get you a second runner-up. Right, so right. be smart about this. Interesting. So here's some interesting fun facts for you all. 90% of guys are more likely to go to a club to hook up with women than they are to go hang out, listen to music, and buy $17 drinks. So there it is. When men go out to, to hook up, to make a connection oftentimes. More women actually sit alone at the bar just to possibly obtain a free drink. So... There are some studies that's been done that says it's it's actually true. So what are your thoughts on hearing these stats and facts, Darren? I believe I believe those facts. I I know women that I've talked to in my life that have told me that they go to bars and they will go to like, you know, the bar at the Ritz Carl or you know, and they will sit and they may order a glass of Cabernet and sit it in front of them, and they will sip that Cabernet for an hour and a half, until waiting until one of the guests of the Ritz mm -hmm. or the Four Seasons comes down to the bar, and then they come sit with them and buy, and buy them that. But I think the conversation goes beyond just the drink. It goes to the actual money involved in it, which goes back to the conversation of your friend, because I think it's more enticing like if you can buy me a drink and my friend mm. 
And if I have four girlfriends, you're buying all of us shots mm. of, you know, 1944, Ooh. you know, $30 a shot. Like, wow. All right. you've, you've gained my attention. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> so, Lisa, attention. what's your thoughts on, on hearing all of this? Where are you right now? I mean, I can definitely imagine that there are, you know, women that go out and do exactly what you said. Because, you know, I, I've definitely I've seen that in a bar. Like in a hotel lobby where there'll be someone sipping a glass of wine for like over an hour <laughs> just to like meet someone and then have them pick up the tab, which is kind of crazy because it's just not the way I was brought up, I suppose. And then, you know, I, I agree that men should expect really a little conversation and at least a thank you for the beverage but nothing more than that like if you think uh yeah a 12 dollar cocktail is going to get you the rest of the night you're crazy all right so we have another sip segment coming up in exactly one minute so if you all don't have your drink be sure to go get your drink so that you can be sipping with us as our drink sponsors bringing us out a whole nother drink so we haven't even really did a dent on this one, but I'm going to be sipping it. Trust me, it's, it's not going to waste. And it's actually pretty, pretty good. So, and I want to tell all the women out there, this conversation is not to demean women at all. I love women. So please don't take this conversation personally. I don't think if you do expect men to buy you a drink, I don't think anything is wrong with it. I truly don't. If I had a daughter, which I truly wish I had one, I would teach her, you better not give him more than two minutes if he ain't offering <laughs> to buy you a drink. Who? And so that's not hoeing my daughter out. It's just, it sends, a, people tell you who they are in the beginning. They tell you who they are at hello. And I would want her to have a thoughtful guy, a kind guy, a generous guy. And people show you that up front. If he can't buy you a drink, don't be expecting him to buy you a ten thousand dollar diamond ring. Okay, you said down what the you line. Said. <laughs> and what you said ain't a lie. So to my point to the women out there, I'm not against you with having this conversation. You know, if you're not doing it, Ashley, you probably should start doing it. Ooh. But <laughs> but we're gonna turn it back over to our sip sponsors so we can learn what we're drinking next. How are you? Hi, how you doing? All right. All right, so the next drink that I'm going to be serving is a basic strawberry daiquiri with pineapple slice and strawberries that were soaked overnight in um, vodka. You can find the larger version of this drink on at charmed underscore drinks on Instagram. And again... For all of you that's out there, it's 4th of July weekend. What are you doing for the 4th of July? For the well, it's 4th? not the weekend, but no, I, I mean, guess it feels like the weekend. Of course, it's not the weekend. Um, basically, I'm not doing anything for the 4th of July, but maybe sipping on a drink. All right, sure. Yeah. And okay. where can people find you again? Okay, you can find me again at Sam Brown on Facebook.com and at Charmed underscore drinks on Instagram. All right, so which drinks y'all like better? I like this strawberry moment right here. That I'm having. Mm. Lisa and Ashley, are you all sipping on something with us? I am. Oh, that's a key in the first one. So, really Ashley, let's too. start with you. What are you sipping? I'm drinking a Corona right now. Okay. All right, a Corona. Ooh. Interesting. So, that's been one of our topics before. It, we talked about it last week, actually. Can a woman on a first date? <laughs> because oftentimes the stereotype is she's considered less feminine for drinking beer real quickly going off topic what do you think about that stereotype ashley i don't think that's true but i wouldn't drink a corona on the first date no okay but i don't think it makes us less feminine i mean i'm relaxing it's uh about to be a holiday tomorrow so i'm relaxing at home all right so I'm gonna drink a corona tonight. you put a lime but in it or any grenadine you put lime or grenadine in your your corona i do I okay do. And Lisa, what you're sipping on over there in Orlando, Florida? I'm having a little champagne over here. Yes. Okay. Champagne? Pop All bottles. Right. Pop bottles. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And you didn't put none of that liquor of yours up in it? That seemed like it would be a perfect mix. <laughs> <laughs> a little mango in that? Be delicious. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. So we are in the midst of our Causing a Stir segment, and this is where we go to you. See me grabbing my phone so we can acknowledge who's out there. And this is where you can type in your questions for us, and we can answer them. So we see Mary Johnson. She says, wow. G. Allen says, Tasha Hardy Ford. Look like she tagged somebody. Tasha Hardy Ford say, hey, nephew, that's your... Yeah, that's, yeah. Your aunt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then why are you saying like that? Is she the she the that's tipsy my, auntie? No, that's actually my mother. Oh, <laughs> and why her she best friend. You nephew? Her, but you know, like you know, okay. when you have somebody, you best, grow up with somebody. You know, that's that's your auntie. You okay. know, that's your mama's friend. I guess. <laughs> All right, and um, G. Allen says, "Hey, my son, Ross, babe." Ross, they call you Ross. Hi, mother. How are you? Yes, they do. But I'm doing a rebranding moment. And get into as, it. As we're getting get here. It. You know, I'm moving away from Ross. That was when I was, you know, 21, like I said, right. when I first moved here. So from where? Where did you move from? Uh, Columbus, Georgia. Okay. Small town. Actually, it's the fun fact here. Third largest city in Georgia. All right. I don't know if it means much. Christopher <laughs> Brown here says, we are. Charm <laughs> Drinks. All right. And we have Robert Ransom. What's up, Robert? We have Jamise Evans, lies. <laughs> what was she talking about? <laughs> Jamise, what you saying? Who's lying? Why are you talking to me at the bar if you didn't plan on buying me a drink? Uh -oh. See? Uh -oh. And Jamise is a, a woman. So just so mm -hmm. you all know, if you ain't got no money, why you out? Go home. Ooh, pray. <laughs> she tried it. That's from Robert. Robert. No, I feel her on that one, though. <laughs> Jahira oh, Young says, go, mom. Santrisha Brown. Uh -oh. All right. Jaira. <laughs> How you pronounce her name? Jaira. Jaira. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jamie says at Robert. Who's at Robert up here? Which one of us is at Robert? Why are you at the bar talking to girls if you don't have any money? Go home, pray. Girls have money and will pay for their Ooh. own drinks. But if you're there interrupting their girl time, the least you can do is pay. Oh, she trying. Uh -huh. Christopher Brown says, as a man, I bought a drink. I expect nothing more than a thank you and the little conversation. So let's pause right there because okay. that's an interesting conversation. I've already made it. I buy drinks. I just thought it was protocol. I don't know who programmed my mind to think that to talk to a woman Chivalry. at a bar that I had to buy her a drink. But there are cases where I have bought a woman a drink and she doesn't say thank you. That's, Brandy, what's rude. your thoughts on that? You're okay. from New York, cause y'all ruled up in rude. New York. So this, maybe this is you coming. You tried just now. <laughs> like, why is the tribalization so bad with New York? Cause okay, listen. So we're not all rude, okay? Um, you know what? I think that you know, like the young lady said via phone earlier, like it's everybody's raised differently. So that's just a lack of manners. It has nothing to do with being a female you know, positioning themselves at the bar. I feel like there's sometimes that I may say hi, sometimes that I may say no. It's sometimes that I put my, not put myself in a position, but I, I know when somebody's going to buy me a drink. And I just feel like... Laws of attraction. It's just, it is what it is. I can pick up on the vibe and on the energy, but I don't feel like women necessarily just say I'm going to sit at a bar today I'm going to go by myself and I'm just going to get free drinks like I'm only leaving the house with $20 and I'm going to get free drinks that's not the case you know I've been bartended different places and that's not the case I think just, sometimes you just you, you're vibing out and somebody buys you a drink sometimes you want to talk to them later sometimes you don't but that's just you know Lisa what's your thoughts on women not saying thank you after they get the free drink they just take the drink and keep it moving that's rude. I mean, even if you have no intention of a long conversation or anything with someone that, you know, kind enough to buy you a drink, the least, like, bare minimum you should do is say thank you. Interesting. So we're still in the cause and the stir segment. For those that just tuned in, we are talking about do women position themselves at the bar for free drinks. And the Cause and the Stir segment is where you can ask us questions or you can make your statements. We have Christopher Brown that says, I'm the husband she referred to. Who's, whose husband uh -oh. is up here? All right. <laughs> and that's fact. I was don't look over here. I know you lie. Before I was married, I would buy all her girlfriend drinks. All right. Ooh, is that true, are, though? Are you, are you agreeing? It this? got him married. Is I that mean, true? Would you have I mean, married I mean, him? Yes, I mean, I yes got it married. is because... 
when you buy the friends a drink, it makes an impression because at the end of the day, your friends is going to let you know, like, yeah, girl, that's it. You better go for it. They're going to push it. Even if you're not interested, just having the friends on your side, that says a lot. All right. And so would you have dated him if he didn't buy you or your friends drinks? He just wanted to talk and sit there and maximize your time, take away from your girlfriend time. Would you have dated him? Would it have made a difference? Um, no. Nah, oh, nah. She basically said, no, nah, I would have dated him anyway. It took too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took too long. I love. I mean, it's, it's, it's the hazel eyes. I would have dated him anyway because of uh, that. Right. But, <laughs> but, like he, but like he said, once, once like you have the boy. friends, once you have the friends in, in the pocket, right. you have the lady because it makes an impression. You yeah. buy all her girls' drinks. Hey, he's willing to spend that money, not only on my drink, but on their drink. Right. And, and that time to interact with, and not only me, but with them, it says a lot. That's like Kool-Aid points. Right. She getting the purse, y'all. So we have Jasper. Jasper says, hey, Mr. Al. Who's Mr. Al? Are you Mr. Al? I guess that would be me. Ooh. All right. Jasper Bracely. <laughs> All right. Jahira Young says, this show is the bomb, the truth. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And so... I had a question. So should a woman accept a drink from a man, Ashley, if she has no intentions on talking to him? Like, she already know he's not even my type because all the examples we've given tonight was he is attractive. I am attracted to him. He is everything I want. But you already know at hello, you're not giving this man the time of day. Is it okay to accept his drink? Okay, that's not good. I mean, you say thank you. You have a little bit of conversation and cut it off from there. You picking us up to drink. Wow, Brandy, what's your thoughts on that? Um, Let's come back to Brandy. <laughs> what's your thoughts? <laughs> I, I feel like I don't agree with that. Yeah, I, um, I don't agree. I think it's the first time we agree tonight. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is the first time we agree tonight. But I, I, yeah, I feel like at that point, it's just you trying to get something for nothing. Like, you know that this person isn't just buying you a drink out of the kindness of their heart. Like, they are trying to show you something so that you will give them conversation, so they may lead to a second date, anything. So if you know that you have no intentions of having even a conversation about where you're from, don't accept the drink. Right. Because, you, 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 as you said, you Lisa, came here with your Lisa, own Lisa, let's go to you. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept the drink um, if I had absolutely no intention of talking to this person or, you know, wanting to chat it up, I would just politely decline and say no thank you. All right, Brandy, you uh, got your thoughts together over there yet? I don't think we're being a hundred <laughs> right is, is, is now. This, you got a brain I freeze? I don't think we're being <laughs> a, a stack right now. I feel like okay. that's like somebody saying to you, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars right now. No, I no, just no. need you to answer. Why not? I just need you to answer it's this, this question, things. but I need you to answer it honestly. If you know you're not going <laughs> to answer that question honestly, you're not going to tell them no. You just, you want, you want to, okay, what's the question, boo? Because I need that coins. And at the end of the day, if I'm sitting at the bar, like, I'm not going to turn up a drink just because I can never, because I feel like it's like a game right. of Russian roulette. I feel like when a man does that, or even if a female decides to do it, you don't right. know what can happen. You're playing a game of Russian roulette if they're going to talk to you after or if they're not. So you're, it's like when you lend somebody money, somebody asks to borrow money, you should automatically count that as a loss because you don't know if you're going to get it back. So you should automatically say, this person may not talk to me after this, but this is what I wanted to do at the time. So yes, I'm going to take that tequila sunrise, light on the orange juice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we want to acknowledge Shauna Stewart. Again, we are in our Causing a Stir segment. This is where you get to chime in and ask questions or make comments. We say Christopher Brown says facts. Jasper says supporting one of my faves. Hey, Mr. Al. All right. Say it again. If he, <laughs> Jamise Evans says if he buys my drinks, if he buys my friend's drinks, he gets extra brownie points. Mm -hmm. Marie says, sometimes women attend the club and sit at a bar because they went alone. So we've kind of established that. Um, Jamie says, I'm accepting the drink even if I don't think I like him. I will talk to him for a second to determine if I really don't like him. 
wow. She's like, I'm, this is just a second <laughs> chance. Give you a second chance. I don't think I like you, but I'm going to take Let your drink the waters just quick. to make sure I don't like you. <laughs> Let me take a couple of sips and see. That's, right. Because if I don't like you drunk, I definitely don't I like definitely you. I definitely don't like if you. If I can't right. like you after a second cocktail, punk in. <laughs> I need you to pump. Not gonna turn that drink down. I'm, just, right. I'm not going to turn it down. I said what I said, but if I don't like you after the second one, drink, it's like, I'm not... I never right. said I was. That's what I'm saying. If after the second drink, I'm like, oh, he's bl- a blow right now. It's a no for you, Pumpkin. Right. Sorry. Thanks, though. So, Ted Bear, <laughs> we see you watching. Thanks for t- chiming in again. For all of you out there, please go to Rolling Out's Facebook page and type in your questions. But let's put a little twist in it. You are in on a first date, Ashley. And you're at a club atmosphere so you're not at a dinner table you're at a club atmosphere people are up walking it's a bar lounge setting on my first date on your first date you know maybe y'all are getting ready to go to dinner or getting ready to go see a movie or y'all on your way to someone else but you're in a bar lounge or maybe y'all at the Uh club because y'all have done dinner movies and now y'all at a club however it works y'all at a club first date you still not a hundred percent in on this first date with the guy, but you see somebody that you see as attractive, fine. You really don't know nothing about him, but he seems to possess all the characteristics and attributes of a man that you want. The person you with don't. The man recognizes you, acknowledges you, and sends you a drink over. Do you accept that drink? Let no, me sip to that. That's right. disrespectful. That's disrespectful. I can't do that. Now I'm out with somebody else. That's disrespectful. What if he bought both of y'all a drink? Ooh. Send a drink over for both of y'all. That shook the table. <laughs> <laughs> he done shook the table. And now he seems to be the man of your dream. Ashley, what's the man of your dreams? You Denzel Washington. <laughs> Shamar Moore. Yeah, let's just say Denzel. Let's keep it with Denzel. He's Denzel's. <laughs> it's Denzel Washington sending both of y'all a drink. <laughs> most men is not going to do that, but you want to keep this. Okay. Um, keep it 100 now. Keep it. Yeah. He's going to send both of us a drink. He's sending both of y'all a drink. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a cover up, you know, so he's sending both of us a drink. So, I mean, he's just being nice to both of us. I guess that's how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I mean, I'm not gonna take the drink. <laughs> you know, he's you're not gonna take, <laughs> girl. So you I, and him right. ain't gonna take that drink. But if he, but if he send a drink to me and him, we can be, cause I mean, he just sent it to both of us. Shot, say, he's being nice, <laughs> I guess. Say la vie, say la vie. Right. So, Brandy, <laughs> how would you handle that I situation? Know you lie. Oh, but. And let's start with <laughs> scenario number one. He just sent you a drink, he's man sad. of your dreams. He's Okay. The guys so you're with, drink. the guys you with is not the man of your dreams, but you're just trying to make it work. It's a first date. You figure I'm going I'm going to give it a try. Okay, so realistically, I'm cuz I don't want people to think that I'm just like they're like, "Oh yeah, she is so shallow. She is here for the <laughs> she is here for the free cocktails and the free cocktails only." Say okay. She'll go, digger. Okay. But this is what I'm saying. Okay, if it was just me, if he just sent it to me and like he literally like it, you know, gave me a signal like you know that's for you i'm gonna decline i'm I'm gonna keep it a sec i'm gonna decline but if he right. sent both drinks and he's like hey this is for you and your friend i me and my my date will probably laugh at it like i'm i'm probably gonna make a joke of it like oh, i guess he want to take both of us home you know i'm probably gonna make a joke of it we're gonna drink that free drink and it's gonna be an right. ongoing joke like realistically like i'm not about to turn my mother told me manners and when people <laughs> give you things you accept it, it. Your blessing, you right? say thank you and so you why keep are you not gonna it. take the one by yourself then because i don't want to be selfish but you're still your black but that's your blessing but you know what you're right i might send him to the bar to go get a bottle and then take the shot and act like you know Mm. i sent it away but i'm just saying like (laughs) that doesn't even really happen like unless it's maybe like your girlfriend but i don't know what would happen if a woman buys you and your man a drink (laughs) i know you lying (laughs) i wish you would take that drink i dare you to take that drink I, it's a double standard. You right. I ain't even gonna front. It's a double standard. That's a well, good twist. Well, what you? Well, you not thirsty? I got no. You are not thirsty. But it's the first date. No, no. You it's not a thirsty. First date. It's okay, a, so you can take the drink, and after that, it's a no for you, pumpkin. You tried it, Lisa. How would you handle that situation? You're on a first date with the man, and a woman buys the man 
a drink. Mm. Let's start there. What's your thoughts? What's going through your head? I mean, if I was just trying to make it work on a first date and it wasn't vibing, I'd probably just walk away at that point and be like, I'm out. Um, wow, cold yeah, blooded. Yeah, you better yeah. take that skate. So let's say, after a drink? let's say if you are feeling the guy on the first date and the woman brings both of you all over a drink. I don't I don't know. I I kind of see that as like a snide act. I I'd be like, I don't Maybe know. Maybe she wants to take all th- all it. three of y'all home. I would be really pissed Maybe if my date drank the drink. Gucci, Gucci, oh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We still have three minutes left in our (laughs) Causing a Stir segment. This is where you get to chime in and tell us what you think about this conversation. For those of you just tuning in, tonight's conversation is about cocktails and ladies. Do women position themselves at the bar for free drinks? And so we have Jacoby that says... Is a drink just a gateway to bigger things? Because I feel like buying a drink shouldn't be the only thing that grabs your attention. Good point. Dorian says she's preaching good. Who are you talking about? I wonder. (laughs) Ted Bear, you know how many places I've been in. Every female tell me it's a friend of theirs birthday. Our couple. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Ted Bear. Very good point. <laughs> Women do this. It's my birthday. <laughs> Why are you telling me it's your birthday? First thing you c- coming out your mouth. So you know, <laughs> go ahead. That's that? even. That's not even. That's beyond that even that? like someone coming to the bar looking for drinks. They say that to the bartender. Mm. Like people want <laughs> you to. Know, people want free drinks. They want free drinks. They want free shots. As soon as they come up. They want to let you know it's my birthday. It's my cousin's 32nd anniversary of their divorce. <laughs> Anything they can say to be like, oh, cheers to you. Here's a shot of tequila. Well, like, that is, cr- that, that is true. That's true. People do that a lot. Yeah. So, that. a real good point. She says, I hope he's smart enough to slide me his number on the sly. So, on your man, sly. your date, go to the bathroom. See? You may have already rejected the drink, Ashley, but he comes over and slides you his number while your date is in the bathroom. Dizelle gives you his card. Do you accept it? Come on, Ashley. No one sees it but you, Ashley. (laughs) What you going to do, Ashley? slides me his number while my date is in the bathroom. The date that you really don't even care for. You're just trying to make it work. He, he, he want to know if he's in the bathroom, so... You ain't no good, Ashley. Ooh. Ashley, you ain't no good. Ashley, you ain't gonna take the free drink, but you gonna take the number? I you know ain't you no good, Ashley. You only doing it because you, you can try it. Secrecy. I, 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 don't have to, I don't have to call him, though. He's not gonna get my number. He can give me his number all so day. So what you gonna mm-hmm. take it for if you wasn't gonna, exactly. his, was gonna use it? Right, right, mm-hmm. right. You trying to be on the sly. So, Brandy, we already know <laughs> what you'll do, so we won't even ask. Don't ask. <laughs> Lisa, would you take the number? Yes, the man of your dreams. Lisa got questions. <laughs> How tall is okay, the man? Or whatever. <laughs> Lisa, is that a yes? Yeah, that's a yes. Ooh. All right, mm-hmm. there it I mean, is. Who, who's not going to take it? Lisa, keep it 100. This is 100 Proof Show, and we are going to have another commercial break. So if you're not sipping with us, get your sip. And we have one of our sponsors tonight. This segment is brought to you by Charge and Go. As you see here, we have our charge stations charging our phones and iPads here. And we're going to give it over to Cliff. Hello, to Wesley. Thank you for that. Uh, Charging Go Networks is a new wave company offering high quality charging units. We are the leader in the mobile charging device in- industry. We create innovative marketing solutions to help our clients who are looking to engage their audiences and activate their brands. Our digital platforms use a mixture of targeted ads and entertainment to give you direct access to people that fit your target market. Customers get a conversation starter, you generate higher revenues. Founded in 2010, Charging Go Networks has partnered with countless events for thousands of event attendees and their mobile devices. We understand the user experience and know how to engage audiences on behalf of our clients. Charging Go Networks has a special promotion 
for listeners and viewers of the 100 Proof Radio Show with Jay Wesley. This month's special for the listeners and viewers of the show has a $600 value. You can choose from five of our tabletop charging station Falcons, which include free artwork, free delivery, free setup and breakdown. Uh, you have the option of choosing between one or two tables with table skirts, six bar stools, three for each table. Uh, if not that, you can try from our two high boy charging tables, which includes free artwork, free delivery, six bar and stews, three for each table, all for $250. All right, and real quickly, Cliff, what do you think your thoughts on this conversation tonight? Well, um, it has definitely gone up a notch since last week, and uh, um, it's definitely uh, being 100 proof, a lot of uh, good comments, and um, I, I agree, uh, it has to be twofold. Uh, you buy, uh, you can't really expect anything once you buy um, uh, someone a drink at the bar. Um, you just have to know uh, it's a 50-50 uh, uh, split option there. But, um, you know, it's always good to have a good uh, conversation uh, with, with the individual you're speaking with at the bar. And who knows where it may go from there. All right. Excellent. And do you all know what you're drinking for the 4th of July? You drinking for the 4th, Darren? I'm a gin drinker, so everything I drink is usually a gin sour. Okay, gin sour. Yeah. Interesting. Get me there quickly. What you know you what? Drinking? I'm normally a champagne girl, but I think tomorrow I'm probably going to play with a little bit of tequila. Tequila. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bad tomorrow. We have a show on tequila coming up July 24th. Tequila. So, Ashley, what are you going to be sipping on for the 4th of July? I'm probably going to do tequila tomorrow, too. Mm. Oh, tequila. Dangerous. You know, tequila is one of the drinks that gets you the most aroused. Oh. Is it still that? still open? So. <laughs> is it still is <laughs> It's like okay. <laughs> So be careful now. Lisa, what you going to be sipping on for the 4th of July? Will you be home back in Chicago or are you still stuck in Florida? in Florida, but my family actually lives here, so we're having a barbecue, and I'm making a big batch of mango pina coladas with a somra for the whole crew. Interesting. Can you send us that recipe so we can maybe post online? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that'll be great. So tell us real quick about the liqueur and um, your company that you work with. Sure. So we are a very small company. It's a startup. There's only six of us. Um, one of the liqueurs is a chai cream uh, rum liqueur, and the other is a mango rum liqueur. And um, we're based out of Chicago. We use Caribbean rum and real Wisconsin cream, so made in the Midwest, made here in the United States. And, you know, growing in the market as quickly as we possibly can. Interesting. So I'll be home in, you know, I'm born and raised in Chicago, West Side. Yeah. So I'll be home next month, July 27th to the 30th. So let's try to connect. I definitely would love some of the product. Maybe you can ship me some and we can sample Absolutely. it right here on the show. We, yeah, let's do that. Let's that have you on the perfect. show. Yeah. Um, so pleasure. And that I get everybody what everybody is sipping. Yes. Yeah, so we are in the midst of our on fire segment we're just finishing up and we're going into our hot spot segment and that's usually where we tell you what's popping and what's crackalacking around the city but we have an award-winning author on the phone lines with us miss ashley so why don't you tell us about your book ashley um basically my book is about um living your life outside of fear so it just talks about uh, 18 powerful lessons of how um I've overcame fear in different areas of my life. So um, you can purchase the book at www.dearfearbook.com or you can follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little. But I, I started my book tour. I just got a book tour this past weekend that was in D.C. And my next stop is Ohio. And then from there, I'll be in Atlanta September 8th and North Carolina on September 7th. So definitely on tour. And, yeah, it's going great so far. And, I mean, it's just you know, helping men and women all over the world who I know everybody has some type of fear, how to overcome it and how to push through. Thank you. All right. Excellent. So where can people go and buy the book? They can go on Amazon or they can go to Barnes & Noble. We're at Barnes & Noble as well. Or they can go on www.dearfearbook.com. Or if they want a signed copy, they can reach out to me on Facebook and we can go from there. All right, excellent. And we're going to do just a quick round here. 
Brandy, where can people find you at? On well, my social media is B Haley. That's B E E H A I L E Y Y. And my Facebook is B Haley with one Y. All right. Ross, where can we find you at? I'm at. Or B- was I supposed to say Darren? Well, right now, it's, it's, <laughs> it's still, it's, as, of, as of now, it's still Ross. It's at the Ross York. And that's on Twitter, Instagram. No Facebook, that's Twitter, Instagram. All right. And Lisa, where can we find you at? So my personal handle on Instagram is at Lulu1119. And then enjoy Somrus on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, you name it, we're on it. All right, excellent. And as always, you can find Cocktail Chronicles at Cocktail Cron, the number one. We are in the midst of our international sip segment. So this is where we bring our sponsor back. And we do we have a third drink? We just got one one third drink for me. This third drink. This is this the third one. So tell tell us what's in this third drink. Okay, well that's still the second drink. Oh, this is still the second drink. That's still the second one. Okay. (laughs) That's your um, sipping one. No, we don't have the third drink. Okay. But um, once again, you can reach me at sand brown at facebook.com and on Instagram at charmed underscore drinks. All right, excellent. And what are you going to be sipping on tomorrow? For the fourth. Well, of course, I am. As you can tell by the drinks, I am a fruity <laughs> drinker. And sugary drinker. I, I am a fruity, sugary, <laughs> I, and I am a guzzler. I am not a sipper. So, we're going to be drinking. It's going to be between effing, vodka, and Ciroc. Mm, all right. Mm. Excellent. So, for those of you out there, we want to encourage you to always continue watching Cocktail Chronicles on 100 Proof right here at our new home of Rolling Out TV. I'm not sure what I'm going to be drinking. I'm a, I'm not a, so, so much of a sugary drinker. And so the, here's a tip for you all out there. Sugar and salt help the alcohol get to your system much quicker. So when you drink these sugary drinks, you will be messed up before you know it. It's one of those things that catches up to you. So always remember, sugar and salt helps the alcohol get to your liquor, your system quicker. Um, but I'll probably do a vodka gimlet, and I'm a Tito's fan. Um, yeah, so you're a straight to the point kind of guy. Yeah. So we can the, party. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm here for a cocktail. Hold yes. the tail. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm not buying yours okay, either. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be like bartender. Just put it on his tab. Thank you. She'll be with four other girls. Okay. She wanted everybody and to I have shots. Everybody, right. everybody want top to shelf. Shots. Okay. Right. No. <laughs> I've learned. Let me tell y'all. You all have taught me something tonight. Uh, but for those that out there know me, know that I'm a lover, um, I'm generous, I'm kind, and it's probably to my own demise is what people tell me as a tip for love. So I have to really learn to hold back and stop buying <laughs> drinks because it ain't got me nowhere. I'm still, I'm still it's single. Because it got you nowhere? Yeah, well, I mean, it got maybe Not maybe a number, something. nothing? For, for a moment. Wait, 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 a moment. Nice. A moment in time. Yeah, but I'm long Couple term, moments. so I'm not one of the guys that's looking to buy you a drink. You know, just for that moment or for that yeah, one night. So right. really, the guys are the problem, then. You know, no, I think it's y'all <laughs> taking taking free drinks and don't have no intentions exactly. on exactly yeah, taking on you doing home, nothing. right? But I heard Ashley and Lisa out there. What did you all want to add to this? Let's do a quick round of final thoughts. Ross, final thought for tonight. Stop buying people drinks. <laughs> right, there it is. <laughs> Unless until you know their motive. Until you know them, talk to them a little bit because if you know if they after two minutes are ready to go and they want you to buy that drink, they're not interested. Talk to them, give them the minute. If if you're interested and you can see they're giving you conversation, sure buy the drink, but also don't think that that drink is your way into their bed. Gotcha. So we have G. Allen out there. He says, out of respect for one another, the drinks should be declined, whether from a man or a woman. Uh, Jahira thumbs that up. Jason Horn is watching. Joyce Walker says, definitely. Ted Bear says, I hope I get the number because I'm buying the bar. Jamie says, Ooh. for. Oh. Dr- <laughs> well. <his> contact? <laughs> What's well. his at name? Okay. <laughs> Jamie says, but that's definitely once in a lifetime. Joyce Walker said, keep going. Ted Bear says, Long Island Cranberry and Goose. Mm. And margaritas he's drinking tomorrow. I can't forget the Hennessy and cognac either. Mm. Hennessy margaritas. We see you, Lisa. We got Lisa saying what her drink is out there. So 
We want to encourage you to always follow us at Cocktail Cron, the number one. Cron is short for Chronicles. Cocktail Cron and the number one. Every Tuesday here at 9 p.m. for Rolling Out. Next week, our show topic is a deep one, cocktails and suicide. Is there any correlation between alcohol and suicide rates? So as you all know, with Kate Spade, there was alcohol found in her system. Anthony Bodain, there was alcohol found in his system. So my team of producers are digging deep to get the details of the correlation. And we're just going to have an open and candid conversation as we always do. Meanwhile, we want to thank you for tuning in. And we want to you to always continue to tune in. And as we keep it 100 always as your leading source of beverage in, in, uh, industry news, this drink is getting to me. <laughs> and we want to thank our sound engineer, Chan Sino Uno, for the music you're hearing. That's going to take us on out. Thank you all for tuning in.